Hey guys, this is Desiree and welcome to Unbound Book Reviews and today I'm going to be reviewing Someone Else's Ocean by Kate Stewart. We have to take a moment to appreciate the beautiful cover. Oh, is that not stunning? Oh my goodness. I love this cover. I love everything about this cover. As soon as I saw it, I was like, I need to frame that on my wall right now. So, Kate Stewart is one of my favorite authors. Drive to this date is still my number one favorite book of all fucking time. That is the book that turned me on to Kate Stewart and I have been hooked ever since. The Real blew my mind. She is a writer who writes unique romances. She's You're never going to see the same story from Kate twice. She is very, very, very diverse. I feel like she's such an emotional writer. I feel like she's an emotional writer. You know, she just write, she writes what she feels. She's authentic to the story that's in her head. And not one of them are the same. So Drive is unique and it stands on its own. The Real is unique and stands on its own. And this one, same thing. It's so unique and it stands on its own beautifully, but it does have some of her signature traits that I've noticed, like her writing. Oh my God, is her writing beautiful. It's her imagery that always gets me. It's her imagery and her ability to create such great chemistry through the dialogue between the two characters. Guys, this is one of my favorite books that I've read this year. I could not put it down. Guys, even with all of the shit going on in my house, I still finished this book in two days, which for me is pretty damn good. But I needed to escape. You know, reading is my escape. Reading and writing are my escapes. And I needed to get out of my head for a little bit because this has been, what's been going on in my house right now has been so fucking stressful and it's still going on. Um, and it, it's been crazy, but I wanted to lose myself in a book and I picked up so many. And then I hit this one and I couldn't stop reading it. I could not stop reading it. I think this is the perfect summer romance. It just, it hits everything. It hits you in the feels, it hits you in the gut from laughing a couple times. It'll make you want to go run and take a cold fucking shower with how steamy it gets in some points of this book. But guys, I love this book. And with that being said, let's get into the blurb. The first time I met Ian Kemp in the sparkling blue waters of St. Thomas, I was six years old and we shared a summer beneath the stars. The second time I met Ian Kemp, he was a shell of the boy I once knew. Turbulent and infuriating, he refused my friendship at every turn. Like me, he was a casualty of life's cruelty but we were planets apart. We both sought refuge on the island, hoping to find our anchor. Instead, we found each other and managed to reclaim our stars until we both got swept away. So our two main characters, Cody and Ian, they were kind of childhood friends. They're, both of their parents uh, stayed the summer in St. Thomas. Ian's parents actually owns uh, one of the places in St. Thomas, and they got to spend the entire summer there and really get to know each other. And although they kind of bantered back and forth, Ian is a little bit older than Cody. He didn't want to be babysitting a little six-year-old. They eventually became really good friends. And then once the summer was done, that ended, you know, their friendship, sort of. Now, Cody was not born in St. Thomas, and she actually had a thriving real estate career in New York, but it was killing her. And Cody suffers with um, a lot of anxiety. She gets panic attacks, and there was one moment in particular in New York that just really wrecked her. So she basically packed her bags and just went away to the last place she was happy, which was St. Thomas. She went away to escape, to find herself, to give herself some peace, because she didn't think that that was the life she ever really wanted. She was good at it, but was it really her? She does have a bit of a strained relationship, not necessarily with her dad, but with her mother. Her mother has always had very high expectations of her. Her mother was a, formal super, a former supermodel, and she's just always put these very intense and high expectations on Cody. And Cody growing up never ever felt like she was living up to those expectations. She just constantly felt like she was disappointing her mother. And when she was in the real estate business, her mother was so proud of her. And then Cody began to realize, well, this isn't me. I'm not living my life for me right now. I'm living my life for my mother. So she just up and left. And here she works at uh, renting out, I think, condos or houses on the beach with her best friend, Jasmine. And then somebody comes back to town. And that somebody is Ian Kemp. And she has not seen him since he was, I believe he was 14 years old and she was six. She hasn't seen him since that summer they spent together. And what she sees is kind of shocking. He's not the man that she expected him to be. He's not the boy that he used to be. He looks very run down, like life's chaos is just really, you know, 
eroded away like the waves on a beach they it's just eroded at who he was and him and he is quite a jackass to Cody but it's not without a purpose Ian is newly divorced very newly divorced and he just had one hell of a bombshell be dropped on him uh, from his wife now Ian uprooted his entire life to be a family man to have a daughter and be and raise a family with his wife so now he's here trying to figure out what the hell am I gonna do with not only this news that my ex-wife has given me, but what am I supposed to do with my life now? I spent over a decade being married and being a family man. Now what do I do? So for some reason, he decides to go to St. Thomas to live at his parents' house for a while, and Cody ends up being his next-door neighbor. Cody recognizes him instantly. Well, obviously she knows because she knows who's renting the place out. But Cody thinks, okay, maybe we can be friends again. And Cody is so lovable. She has this witty humor. It's She's a fucking delight. I want to be her best friend. All I want to be is Cody's best friend. And she's constantly trying to extend a helping hand to Ian. She's not pressuring him to open up about what's bothering him, but she just wants to help. And Ian is there ripping down cabinets, ripping down pictures. He's infuriated. But eventually Ian ends up feeling a little bit of guilt. He does feel bad for the way that he treated Cody. Um, Cody also suffers from endometriosis, which is very, very painful, especially during her period. And he feels bad, so he's there to comfort her. And they sort of reconcile in this way. And they begin to catch up on the things that they've been through over the past few years. Um, although Ian is still being very secretive about everything that he's gone through he just doesn't want to go into detail and explaining it but they catch up on old times you know they used to make s'mores a whole lot they used to have banana pops and watching them reconnect was one of my favorite parts of the story because i love that i love childhood friends that grow apart and then eventually they find their way back to each other you get to see them reconnect and see how they change and see this new dynamic that they have and when they reconcile they begin to reconnect and you begin to see that they do have a connection still even after all of these years you know they're perfect counterparts to one another Ian was a former marine and now he's looking to uh, get a new professorship somewhere he teaches linguistics he's very prim kind of proper he's South African by the way so he has that wonderful South African accent so you get to see some South African sort of words and dialects in there it's really really cool but Cody is fun and she's very down to earth and even though she has anxiety you would never know it looking at her from the outside unless she actually speaks about it unless you're close enough to her to understand that she has it she's very good at hiding it but the two of them are just perfect counterparts Ian almost feels like he's had the life sucked out of him both of them do in a way but Cody is still living her life she's found you know her sanctuary in the waters of St. Thomas and she's hoping all she's hoping is that Ian is able to find those healing powers in the same way that she has and then their reconnection as friends turns into some flirt and some dirty talk and let me tell you even though Ian Kemp is you know Mr. Prim and Proper Professor over here don't let that fool you because he has a mouth on him and it was surprising to me when we did get some passionate love scenes in there because oh my god were they just delicious that's the only way I can describe it they were just delicious and it was exactly what I wanted to see out of Ian now of course what they have can't last and Ian is brutally honest about this Ian tells her up front look I'm I'm in a selfish place in my life right now I just got out of a marriage I'm trying to figure out what to do with my daughter I have a life back in the States I need to get to her and Cody has found her life in St. Thomas and she's not uprooting that to go back to a place where she felt very very miserable it just made her so miserable so they sort of have an arrangement where yeah they're gonna fool around a little bit they're gonna let's you know see what happens and at the end you know there'll be no love lost between the two of them it's just a little summer fling between two old childhood friends and of course I think we can all surmise on what's gonna happen with that they both end up developing feelings for one another they become so close I love the connection between these two I love that Kate Stewart has this wonderful penchant for creating such an authentic chemistry and connection between her two heroes. And I love that she's authentic to her writing, she's authentic to these characters. Both of these characters, they're flawed, you know, especially Ian because he, you know, he goes off on temper tantrums, especially in the beginning, and he's in a selfish part in his life right now. It wouldn't make sense for somebody who's just had a bombshell dropped on him by his wife 
uh, of 14 years, finally getting out of that and getting a divorce and wanting to get into another, you know, serious relationship immediately thereafter. It doesn't make any sense. So for Ian, being that he's almost 40 years old, you know, he wants his me time. He wants, you know, his selfish time to think. And Cody, you know, she's not really the fling kind of a girl. She's she's had them here and there, but it's not who she is. And eventually she realizes that, yeah, Ian Kemp has her heart. And the same thing happens with Ian. Cody just gets to him. Her life, her fun, the uh, the way she's not a the way she's able to not let everything drag her down. She's still able to come up and resurface and breathe. So the development of the relationship itself between Ian and Cody is amazing to see. It is so natural the way it progresses. I don't feel like this book was too long. I don't feel like it was too short. It was like right at the Goldie, the Goldilocks level where it was just right. You get so much interaction between Cody and Ian and you get so much growth out of these two characters. And I feel like that's something that Kate Stewart really does well in her novel. She does such an amazing job at character growth. That's where she really shines, I feel. You know, starting out with characters that are kind of broken or they're in a certain period of their lives where, they're, where they are broken. And she has this amazing ability to heal them, to give them their happiness. But it's in a natural way. It doesn't come without its problems. And that's what makes the book really authentic to me. And her writing, it's the way she writes it, her prose is beautiful. She's so detailed, but without being too detailed. And I mean, the imagery that you get, you're just in St. Thomas, you can feel the waves, you can smell the fucking ocean air. It's amazing. Now, the other thing that I love about, about Kate Stewart's writing is I connect to her characters more than I do almost any character of any book or by any other author. I don't know what it is exactly, but in Dry, there was something very, very uh, deep in the way that that hit me. And the same thing in The Real. There was something just deep within me that really was able to empathize with these characters. And the same thing happened here with Cody. I have anxiety. I go through panic attacks sometimes. It sucks. It's not an easy thing to deal with. And the way that she was describing them, like, I'm right there with her. Like, I feel it. I understand what she's going through. And how she's able to let you connect to the characters. Even if you don't have anxiety, I feel like you could connect to Cody. And you get to see how multifaceted these characters are. You get to see Cody when she's happy and when she's having fun. And then you get to see her when she's at her lows, when she has her panic attacks, when her anxiety is really getting to her, when she's falling hard for Ian and she really doesn't know what is going to happen at the end of the summer. She knows it's going to break. She knows it's going to break her. Then you get to see Ian, who starts off as this kind of a jackass who is pushing Cody away constantly and he's angry. He's in a very angry part of his life. And then you get to see how soft he is when he starts to open up to Cody. You get to see how soft he is when he opens when he's talking to his daughter. You get to see the potential of what a wonderful man Ian is. He is not a one note brooding hero, which is sometimes my issue with brooding heroes. I love them, but at the same time I'm very picky with them because more often than not they can be a little bit one dimensional. But with Ian and with Cody, they are they are multifaceted characters. There are multiple layers that make up who they are. And therefore there are multiple layers that build up that make up their connection. They're connected on so many levels. And again, I also love that Ian was brutally honest with Cody in what he was looking for. He's not looking for a relationship right now. He just got out of a marriage that ended very badly. He's in his selfish time. And I love that Cody, I love that we got to see Cody struggle with that. And then I love that we got to see Ian struggle with that. It was just a wonderful balance. Would I say this book was super angsty? Like if you've, if you've read Drive, that was really, really angsty, not for the sake of it, it had purpose. But that was very angsty. It was a tough read. It really was a tough read because I got very emotional through a lot of it. I did get very emotional through parts of this, but it wasn't overly angsty. I thought it was just, it was beautiful. You got to explore the depth between these two characters and their story. There was so much depth into it, but it never got to a point where I felt like it was too much or too angsty or anything like that. I thought it was really, really perfect 
that's why earlier I said this was the perfect summer read because I just think it is. You get the steam, you get some fun banter, you get a couple of funny moments in here, and then you get those moments that really pull and tug on your heartstrings. You get all of those elements that are so crucial in making a well-rounded romance story, and again, you have that gorgeous writing that she has. You just can't go wrong with it. I loved it. Can I, am I going to say it was my favorite by her? I can't anymore because with every book by Kate Stewart that I read, they're all so different that it's impossible to compare any of them. Drive is very different from The Real. The Real is very different from this one. She's not a one-track author who just kind of writes the same thing with different characters. It's always a fresh new story. It's always so authentic and so well paced and you just never know what you're going to get with Kate Stewart, although I mean that in the best way possible. She just is able to create this entirely new world for you and that's what I love the most about it. How easily I'm able to immerse myself into her books even though my life is chaos at the moment. She, I was lost. I was lost in this book and with these characters and I loved every single second of it. Alright guys, so that is it for me today. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this review. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and please subscribe and don't forget to hit the notification bell down in the right hand corner so you can continue seeing videos from me on your feed. And again, thank you guys so much for your patience for the inconsistent videos on this channel. I'm going to try to keep things consistent. But again, it's chaos right now, but I promise you I will try my best. And with that being said, thank you guys again so much for watching. Love you guys. Bye.